Tinakoto Kato. Ko Toki Toki, Tokuawa. Ko Taki Temu, Tokuwaka. Ko Waparki, Tokuana. Ko Nati Kahununu, Toku Iwi. No Napier, Aho. Ko Tremain, Toku Fanao. Ko Idu, Toku Angua. No Rera, Tinakoto, Tinakoto, Tinakoto Kato. Kia ora. My name is Edu Tremain. And I'm here to tell you about the polluted water problem we have in New Zealand. Previously, I introduced myself to you all with my PPR. Did you notice how many of the sentences in my PPR related to water? My PPR involves stating my ocean, moana, river, awa, and waka, which travels along our waterways. The importance of why, the te reo Māori word for water, in Māori culture is apparent. Seafood was also a major part of the native Māori diet as they use flax nets, traps, and hooks to catch the various fish around New Zealand. In Māori mythology, the god of the sea, Tangaroa, was one of the most powerful gods. Not to mention, Maui's greatest adventure took place in the ocean by casting his jawbone and catching Te Waipaunamu, the South Island. To witness the sea life slowly being decimated in New Zealand due to pollution must be causing unimaginable grief within our Tangata Whenua. When I was a kid, a typical weekend for me was going to Clive and jumping off the bridge into the river. These days, the water is far too polluted, and swimming in the river is prohibited. This is the case for countless New Zealanders who have had the privilege of swimming in their local rivers, stripped away from them by the byproducts of our production industries. Green chemistry is a recently started branch of science that is going to be paramount in the next few years. Green chemistry involves using chemical processes and reactions to reduce or eliminate harmful substances we have released into the environment. Water has countless applications in our day-to-day -day lives, from keeping us clean to being an essential part of survival for every organism on Earth. Water is a limited resource and needs to be preserved for future generations. Water pollution, occurring mainly from industrial waste, is a cause for concern and if not acted on correctly, will have serious consequences for us as a species. At present, chlorination is being used to try and eliminate the hazardous chemicals in our waterways. It has been a big help in lowering disease rates and keeping us safe. However, chlorination is known to release toxic organic chlorides. These toxic organic chlorides were originally fine for humans to consume and had minimal effects on the environment. After 150 years of using this method, however, the number of toxic organic chlorides in our water supply has built up and we are starting to see the effects. Chlorination can also cause our tap water to have an off-putting taste and smell. The main trihalomethane disinfectant byproducts, DBPs, that the chlorination process creates are chloroform, bromodichloromethane, chlorodibromomethane and bromoform. These byproducts of chlorination are carcinogenic meaning they have the ability to cause cancer. Studies done on rats and humans have proven that these DBPs, when consumed, severely increase the risk of cancer in the liver, kidney and intestine. These byproducts do not break down, meaning the risk of increasing as more and more of these trihalomethanes enter our water supply. The time to change is now. The solution is near with the use of green chemical oxidation procedures. The use of green chemical oxidation procedures for the purification of water has been a heavily researched topic in recent years. The problem with these methods tends to be the large activation energy barriers required for these non-spontaneous reactions to occur. However, due to a massive breakthrough in oxidation catalysts by New Zealand-born American science scientist Terence J. Collins, the solution is here. Terence J. Collins has created tetraamidomacrosylic ligands, or TAMLs for short an iron-based catalyst that are hundreds of times smaller than the enzymes previously used, making the production of the catalyst significantly cheaper and easier. The Tamil structure consists of a central iron atom bonded to four nitrogens. Surrounding that are carbon rings linked to form an outer ring called the macrocycle. This outer ring provides stability to the molecule and allows the molecule to survive the re violent reactions it creates. The Tamils also contain a water ligand, a ligand being the functional group which is bonded to the central iron atom. Hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, is a strong oxidizing agent 
that when paired with Tamils can fully destroy many pollutants in a matter of seconds. When Tamils are in a solution with pollutants and hydrogen peroxide, the hydrogen peroxide replaces the water ligand. The peroxide ligand then discards both its hydrogen atoms and one of its oxygen atoms in the form of water, leaving behind a negatively charged oxygen. The oxygen, being more electronegative than the iron, causes the electrons to be pulled closer to the oxygen, resulting in a larger positive charge on the iron. This means that the Tamil is reactive enough to extract the electrons from oxidizable pollutants. The strong positively charged iron breaks down pollutants into non-hazardous compounds and ions. The hydrogen peroxide and Tamils after the process decompose in a matter of minutes, making them safe for the environment and for human consumption. The production of hydrogen peroxide involves the use of just air, water and electricity, making it undeniably cost effective. The Tamil peroxide combo has the disinfectant properties of chlorine, minus the harmful byproducts. Additionally, with an, e with an easier and cheaper production process, there should be no reason not to begin the change to peroxide in Tamils immediately. Our Tangata Whenua will once again be able to live peacefully in Ranga as we fix the mess we created. Thank you for listening.